liberal dreamer. My, par my parents had different views on most things politically, but they always agreed on one thing, that everyone should be treated with fairness and kindness. And that's why I stand with President Obama and Vice President Biden. We all come together as one American family. So let's make sure. So with that, I, I want to thank Sarah for that very kind introduction. For this campaign, I got a chance to meet your president, President Nugent, and I want to thank her and all of you for hosting us here at Kenyon. This is a beautiful campus, beautiful facility, and you all should be so proud. And I also want to recognize your fabulous former First Lady, uh, Frances Strickland, who is working probably harder than me. I see her everywhere. She is phenomenal. So I want to thank her. It is just a joy for me to be with you all today. And you all seem pretty fired up and ready to go. And I am feeling fired up and ready to go because in just three days, three days, <laughs> we have the opportunity to reelect such a, a decent, honest man, a man whose courage and integrity 
that we have seen every day for the last four years. And of course, he's the man I loved and admired for 23 years, my husband, your president. <laughs> Shortcuts are gaining the system. 
And we also believe in keeping our priorities straight because we all know good and well that cutting Sesame Street is no way to balance our world. And since the day he took office, on issue after issue, crisis after crisis, that's exactly what we've seen in our president. I mean, let's think back to when Barack first took office. Where were we? This economy was on the brink of collapse. You don't have to take my word for it. Newspapers were using words like meltdown, calamity, declaring Wall Street implodes, economy in shock. Those were the words they were using. The auto industry was in crisis. The economy was losing 800,000 jobs a month. And a lot of folks wondered whether we were headed for another Great Depression. Absolutely. <laughs> Because of 
condition like diabetes or asthma. Very clear. 
And as Barack has said, this election will be even closer than the last one. That is the only guarantee. And it will all come down to what happens in a few key battleground states, like right here in Ohio, especially right here. Because in 2008, Barack won Ohio by about 262,000 votes. Now, while that sounds like a lot, when you take that number and break it down across precincts over the entire state, that's just 24 votes per precinct. That was the margin of victory. 24 people in every precinct. Now, that could mean just one vote in a neighborhood, right? One vote in, in a single apartment building or a couple of votes on a college campus, you know? We all know 24 people who might not vote, right? We can find those people. So the thing I want folks to understand, particularly young people who are just getting engaged in this stuff, if there is anyone here, anyone you know, who might be thinking that their vote doesn't matter that their involvement doesn't count, that in this complex political process that ordinary folks can't possibly make a difference. See, I want you to keep that number in your head, 24. And that's not just in Ohio. North Carolina, the margin of difference was five votes per precinct. So I can take you through every battleground state and the numbers are that real, that close. So, I want you to think about how with just a few more hours knocking on doors, you know, we got three more days. This is a weekend, Kenyon. <laughs> All right, weekend. What, what are your weekend plans? <laughs> All right, if you've got any dates planned, bring them to the campaign office. <laughs> Do something real clever like that. and persistent. 
But also know this, that if we keep showing up, which is half of the battle, showing up if we keep fighting the good fight and doing in our hearts what we know is right, then eventually we get there. We always do. And that's why every single one of you has every reason to be optimistic about your future, about what lies ahead, because we know that here in America, we always move forward. Always. We always make progress. And in the end, that's what this is about. That's what elections are always about. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Elections are always about hope. What kind of hope am I talking about? The hope that I, I saw on my father's beaming face as I walked across the stage to get my college diploma. The diploma that he took out loans to help me get. The, the hope that Barack's grandmother felt as she cast her ballot for the grandson she loved and raised. The hope of all of those men and women in our lives who worked that extra shift for us who saved and sacrificed and prayed so that we could have something more. So many of us are here because of people like that who worked for us. The hope that so many of us feel when we look into the eyes of our kids and our grandkids. That's the kind of hope I'm talking about. Because that is why we're all here. Because all these beautiful little kids, all of them, because we want to give all of our children a solid foundation for their dreams. We want to give all of our kids opportunities worthy of their promise. Because I don't care where you're from, what political party you belong to, we know good and well that all of our kids are worthy. We want to give our kids that sense of limitless possibility. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That belief that here in America, the greatest country on the